Hi, it's Stephen Caleb with Brown Elves here, bringing you another edition of Smithbusters. And today we have another AR-15 myth, and these are near and dear to your heart as well as mine. I mm, know that. Of course. But this one's a little different. Yeah, uh, polymer lowers are garbage, Steve. Well, <laughs> that'll, that'll come as a surprise That wasn't to some a people. statement, that was like the myth. That I oh, okay, you know, okay. I, yeah, um, we sell a lot of polymer up. Lowers actually. We do. We yeah. sell quite a bit. Now, of how them. is that possible? So, there's a there's a there's a lot of ways to do it wrong, um, and there's been a lot of development, of course, with the first polymer yeah. lowers kind of coming yeah, up. A rewind 20, 30 years, and you find yeah. absolute junk. You do, and you know, if you want a full history of like the the polymer lower receivers, um, Ian from Forgotten Weapons has a really good video on them. Yes, he does. Um, so go watch that for more detail. But basically, you know, that through the development of them, they've uh, they've come a long way. But there's still some companies out there that just don't make ones that last. I'll say. Sure. I'm not going to say any names of those companies, but we still see a lot of broken ones. And to kind of give you an idea of what we mean when we say broken ones is um, the main stress point on any AR lower receiver is going to be this area right here. I'll, I'll actually, you know, point to the side that you guys can see and not Steve. Steve, they're right it's here. It's so much easier. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's right here, this point right here. Because whenever that bolt's slamming back, it's putting all the stress on this whenever it hits its rear travel. And um, that's where they just break off. Especially if the gun's overgassed. Spe oh, an overgassed polymer lower? Yeah. Uh, a, a polymer lower on an overgassed gun, I should say, right. is just a recipe for disaster. Um, but... There's companies that do it right. Like for yeah. example, the the KE Arms currently, they uh, they have you know that big one piece stock on them, like on the Volvo Stoner Do Rifle. They reinforce that area, and they hold extreme. Even on over gas guns, you can't really see any excessive stress or wear on those. What about areas. the pins? That's a stress point. The pins are a stress point. They also reinforce those areas. Uh, but you gotta you gotta get a good polymer lower that has those areas reinforced right. if you're gonna do it. So polymer lowers are not trashed I trash if they're done right. What did I say? Garbage. Garbage. Garbage, garbage. Yes. Let yeah. me uh, let me rewind here. I'm getting I'm getting all flustered and worked and up, Steve. In the in the world of polymer lowers or polymer guns, I think we owe Glock a little oh, praise man. for showing the way of what a polymer could actually do. Because yes. when they came out, I didn't believe a, a plastic gun, what I called them then, could last at all. It would just tear itself apart. Well, there's a lot of Gen One Glocks out there running just fine. Yeah, the uh, term I hear often is the old Tupperware guns. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, still still hear still hear that quite a bit, and it's it's comical. Uh, but when you when you look at what Glock's done, when you look at what Magpul's done with mm. materials. Oh man. Um, now the polymer lower is a thing. It's a real thing. It's a, it's a very real thing, and it's a actually a really great thing, especially on a handgun, because you all your recoil and all your stress is on the actual locking block. And the yeah. slide rails, you just make those out of steel, and it doesn't matter what the lower's made of. Yeah. So if you've been looking at polymer lowers, you know, to build an ultra lightweight gun or something, mm -hmm. um, it's a good option. It really is. Yeah, and that is indeed the benefits of using a polymer lower is, you know, weight and, in most cases, cost. Right, so. right. So if you've had any experience with polymer lowers, either good or bad, please leave us a comment below. We'd like to hear both sides of that equation. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, we thank you for watching this edition of Smithbusters.